significant problems with ex exponential growth we've seen in the Pikes Peak region is finding affordable housing for those struggling to find a permanent place to call home. More recently, a new homelessness prevention and response coordinator named in Colorado Springs. I recently had a chance to sit down with Crystal Carr one-on-one -on -one to talk about this daunting task that she faces. It's a complex issue with homelessness, whether you're talking about seniors, veterans, individuals or families. Nonetheless, Crystal Carr is excited and hopeful about her new position, but adds it's extremely challenging. While she supervises just one person in her new role, she's embedded within a city network, the Community Development Division, that collectively address the issues of homelessness. But the bottom line is there's too many people in this community that need some place to live to start over again or build up from where they are. My experience says that the majority of people that I worked with really wanted to make a positive difference mm -hmm. and to, you know, get ahead and get stable and get that housing on their own where they are independent. But that's easier said than done in an environment where the cost of living, particularly housing, continues to rise, wages remain stagnant. The term affordable housing, it seems, is a reach as it relates to what it actually costs to build and place these folks looking for a permanent home, but that is Carr's top priority. While there is funding available, she told me the money available is either drying up or doesn't go as far as it did just two years ago. The latest numbers from what's called the Point in Time Survey of the Homeless Population in the Pikes Peak region, conducted in February, shows just over 1,400 people experiencing homelessness over 1,100 living in emergency shelters or transitional housing. Nearly 400 considered chronically homeless, with a huge increase in the number of veterans and young adults aged 15 to 25 without a permanent place to call home. Now, Carr is firmly entrenched in trying to help people transition to permanent housing, having served as executive director of Family Promise here in the Springs. Well, she believes one of the big advantages of this new job is the relationships, the collaboration she built with other public and private organizations in town that are all working for the same goal. And it takes a network of support, as the issue of homelessness is so much more than just putting a roof over their head. There are mental health issues for many, drug or alcohol abuse, transportation, finding employment when you're living out of your car. So when you're struggling with mental health issues or post-traumatic stress and you don't have the basics of a safe place to stay for the evening, it makes it really hard to remember what day it is, let alone make it to your psychiatric appointments and those kinds of things. And a key part of her new job is coordinating resources and support, putting the right people with the right agency, public, private, nonprofit, to meet the needs of those who want help, engage with, and help them transition. And it's expensive, correct? Oh, I mean, absolutely. we've seen two of these uh, shelters for families, etc., mm -hmm. have to close because there just isn't the money being designated either privately or publicly. How do you change that in terms of the funding of trying to resolve these issues? For those agencies, they absolutely have to do a combination of getting donors that, you know, private donors who are committed and caring about these issues and wanting to help others and combining that with grants, whether those are federal or private grants. And make no mistake about it, progress is being made. Just this past week, for example, the grand opening of this tiny house community, working fusion at Mill Street, it's called, transitional housing for those young adults age 18 to 25, not to mention the continuum of care that brings together multiple organizations, nonprofits, faith-based groups, Springs Police, the fire department's homeless outreach teams, and Homeward Pikes Peak, just to name a few. And it, you need somebody on the other side looking at you and saying, I see you and I see that you are valuable and of worth. And so the more that we get providers that are able to do that, that really helps lift those people up. And Carr says that federal dollars are coming in as well to help offset the cost of building more affordable homes. 
And while she's still transitioning into that new role, building on what is already in place, she's particularly encouraged by a city program called Work COS, where homeless are actually employed by the city for six to 12 months, a hand up to permanent employment. In fact, she says three have been hired full time now by the city. She hopes to expand that program during her time and the opportunities it provides.